This is Marilyn Kreiss. I am so pleased to teach you through the magic of Leo Leone's fabulous work, the art of spelling, the art of saying things that are important and writing them out. So I have created something for you and I'd like you to think about possibly creating the same thing. It does not take a lot of magic material. I brought a sample and if you don't have it, if you are wearing like a, a shirt like this made out of cotton, doesn't even have to be dark, you can begin to make what is called a felt board. Not because it feels good, but it does. Uh, so here's what I did, just an example. A long time ago, I created for some teachers a felt board book. So what I did was I took some felt, it's kind of old and that's even better. You can even use an old towel because what we're doing is we're having the material stick to the material. No glue, it can come off, it can move around. So this is the very first ever, for you maybe, felt board book. So what book means that it opens up. This little pocket here, that's where I keep some stuff. So I'm gonna reach inside and see what stuff I got. It's a letter, it's the letter E. And let's see, I can get it in a place where you can actually see it. See what happens? You take a piece of felt, you cut something out, and you put here. E is for excellent. Now, of course, it also stands for email, which we get a lot of. So I'm going to put the E down and see uh, what we've done. So because I was making a story, I'm going to peek first, so it's perfect for you. Yes, because I was making a story, I made a little scene here. And the scene is blue and green for the grass. And we are going to see a puppet show. So I wrote the word puppet and because puppets have eyeballs, I put a couple in there. Now our story on our felt board book can continue. So let's say the E, let's make up a story. Pup and pet could be a dog pet, right? It's really easy that way. So what if the pet left the pup and went to this side of the board? What kind of a story could we make here? One day, the pup and the pet separated and went looking for each other. That's the kind of story our author for today, Leo Leone, would just delight in telling. So a little bit, oh, okay, this is how the story ends. They got back together. Oops, we dropped something. Is that all right? Oh yeah, everybody makes mistakes, excluding me. So here we are, we're back to our author. So Leo Leone was born quite a bit ago, even before me, and he was born in Holland. And then when he was a little guy, they went and lived in Italy. Leone, his mama was an Italian opera singer. And he, and they encouraged him to do this, was a great artist and a designer. As a matter of fact, he was the, the designer and the consult for the chief designer, excuse me, for a magazine called Fortune Magazine, which perchance some of you don't read, but it's still around. Now, let me see if I can get away from the light. Oh, there he is. This is one of his most famous books. It's called Geraldine, the Music Mouse. If you look very carefully, you can see what Geraldine the Music Mouse is made of. Mm -mm -mm, delicious. Another one of his very famous stories is Frederick. He has a fascination with mice. I, uh, yes and no, right? So Frederick is a very famous mouse as well. Maybe we'll tell him sometime. And here is another one called Inch by Inch. I love that he wrote. Look at how beautiful his pictures. And what do they look like to you? Cutouts, exactly right. They look like collage cutouts. This one, Inch by Inch, what do you think it's about? It's about an inch one. And uh, he won a Caldecott Award. That is one of the highest awards you can get, especially for writing books for you and me, kids. All right, now this one is a story of a flea. A uh, flea, as you know, lives on, on any other animal. It's called a symbiotic relationship, right? And the flea wants to go somewhere and the, looks to me like the dog doesn't want to go there. So they have a discussion. You've had those, right? And here's one I do believe we've uh, told somewhere. 
and we may not, I may have told it with others, but I particularly like to bring this one because it is an argument that we often get into. It's called, it's mine. What does it mean? It means they're arguing about who owns what. And one of the reasons I particularly like to show this to you is not only is it in English, but it is in so many other languages like this one here. This one is in Chinese. So everyone all around the world can read his books because they've been put in so many, so many languages. The one we are about to tell, you and I, oh, was written in 1968, a year I'm very fond of. And um, it's called The Alphabet Tree. So I bet you know what it's about. It is about the alphabet. It is about a tree. Now, I will admit, I had a great time making this story for you. And I did because some of it is hard to even see, but I made it with a great big felt board. This is a felt board and I can take it apart, but I know it's gonna be a little bit hard for you to see. So what you're gonna to have to do is to listen a little bit harder. And I will tell you what these letters, where these letters are on our tree. So where do you think? So I'm going to pull one out. Does anyone have a favorite letter? Oh, me? Oh, I do. Okay. My favorite letter is M because it starts my name. So here it is. This leaf has an M on it. And you see where we're going with our story? Every single leaf up here has a letter. And this is called the alphabet tree. One last thing we're going to do just to prep for our story is to make some more leaves. So how do I do that? You can take a piece of paper and then we're going to cut some leaves out. Now we are in the fall time of the year. And as the word implies, the leaves are falling. And even though our story doesn't tell us what time of the year is, we're just going to assume that it is in the summer because the leaves are green. Now, because I love the fall, I made my tree very fallish, you know? We've got all the different beautiful colors. I like to keep it that way too. So here's some great big leaves. We're gonna use these, you and I, to create something better. But for now, I think it's time I started, don't you? Good. Well, where's the puppets? Is that what I heard you say? Well. I'll show you. We have two puppet characters. They're kind of funky. Let me put my pen here in case I forget where I put it. Remind me, okay? Um, this is called a word bug. Uh -huh. Now, word bugs like to encourage words. See? Words. Words are made of what? Letters. Got it. All right. So what is he made of? A sponge ball. Mm -hmm. Nice job. You say, we're going to keep you in my pocket. I like pockets when I do shows because if I can't find my puppets, sometimes they're hiding in there. And props. Okay. The last one. Ooh, he's a little bit bigger than their average. And he is a most unusual. Ooh, I hit him upside down. You're going to love him. He is a most unusual snake. And uh, I'm going to later wear them around my neck like a lovely shawl, but I don't encourage that. And if you look carefully, this is how he is made. Look really carefully in there, there's a jump rope that um, donated itself to make my puppet. And that encourages him and allows me to move him around so that he can do whatever I ask him to do. And of course, there's a smell, so he can speak to you. He likes to speak words. That's me. Great. All right. So, oh, you want to know what he's made out of? He is made out of sponge bats that I cut up. So as I always say to you, if it's not yours, you have to ask permission to use it. So let us start our story. I'm going to have Mr. Snake move over here and put some of our props over here. Okay. 
I don't have everything. Story is called The Alphabet Tree, written in 1968 by Leo Leone, who loved what he did. And he did not become an author of children's books until after he left Fortune magazine. So this was his um, second career. But he was always drawing, always, and always making things. So we'll let us start our Once Upon a Time. Once upon a time in the middle of the forest, there was a tree. And along one day came a bug and an ant. And as the ant was walking around, looked up at the tree and said, what's that? And the bug said, why, that's the alphabet tree. And when the ant looked a little bit closer, he saw that each and every one of those leaves had a letter on it. Well, that is so beautiful. And they were very happy, the letters. As a matter of fact, they were so happy that every once in a while they would hop from one leaf to another. Sometimes the K liked to go visit the S, and sometimes the A liked to visit the V. And they would hop around happily. And they always stayed there until one day. One day, there was a huge windstorm blowing and blowing, and even though they tried as hard as they could, all of the leaves clinging and clinging and clinging and clinging and clinging and clinging and clinging. <laughs> fell to the ground until there were none. They fell and fell and fell and landed. Not too far away, but huddled together in fear. Now, along came the word bud, and he said, what's the matter? And the letter said to him, we're afraid. Afraid of what? Said the word bug. And they said, the wind blew us down. Mm. Now the word bug was very, very wise. And this is what he told them. Well, if you join together in words, then you could be stronger. They had never thought of that. They had lived independently on the alphabet tree for so very long that the thought of leaving their own leaves and then joining together had never occurred to them. And so they started. And this is the very first thing they did. They started with simple words. For example, the letter A found himself there. Good start, but a start wasn't good enough. And the O went over there. Another good start, but it really wasn't a start. What it really was, was the middle. And then the word bug watched as those letters put together words. They were simple words at first, like C and A. Cuh, that's not a word, thought the word bug. And D and O, that wasn't a word, said the word bug. But C and A joined together with T, and they made the word cat. Oh, that was exciting because they never knew they could do that. And then the Y flew all the way over there. And the minute that it flew, of course, it was joined by A. That's not a word. So what could we add that would make a word? Well, that was easy because the F flew over and made the word fly. The animals were, leaves were so excited and the G made the word dog. Oh, they said to the word bug, how does that look? That looks great. And off he went, but not too far. Some of the words and the letters made were nice words, but nothing very special. And with that, along came a very odd creature, one they had never seen before. And what he did was climb all the way over and look up at those words, cat, dog, fly. Those are nice words, but they're not very special. Oh. They had thought they did such a good job. They were a bit disappointed. So the sentence snake said, why don't you make a sentence? Well, of course, he had to explain to them what a sentence was, but you know and I know. So they made simple sentences. 
maybe the sentence was something like a cat chased a dog. Now, chase is a pretty big word, but they could do that. They just had to find all the words that went together. And so they did, and the sentences were nice, but they were simple. So what could he do? Well, the sentence snake said to them, hmm, I want you to write something really, really important. Important, they said. What could be important? Well, he talked to them about words that make a difference. So they thought about it for a very long time, and this is what they did. What could be more important than the word peace, they said. And so they were the word peace. All together, the P and the E and the A and the C and another E that was their friend. But peace was a good word, but it wasn't a sentence. So our snake encouraged them to continue. Some of the words were simple words like on. Mm. And maybe there was a word like to, to, T-W-O, no, T-O. Is that confusing? No, not to you, sentence man. When they had finished with their statement, it read like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven words. And it said, peace on earth, goodwill to all. <gasps> what a beautiful sentence, said this sentence snake. And then he said to them, and I will tell you, climb on my back. That was a bit scary. They had never left the tree before, and but they did. And they climbed on that snake's back. And then they said, in their own way, where are we going? And the sentence snake said to them, we're going to share this message with everyone. And they did. Peace on earth, goodwill to all. It's a message for you, a message of thanks, but mostly a message of peace. And that, my friends, that is how the alphabet tree, standing in the middle of anywhere you want, could help you to tell a story.